Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can create moving platforms inside Unreal Engine. So if I go to this elevator, it is only going to move up when I get inside it. And then if I get in again, it gonna lift me down again. And you can see it works quite smoothly. And then there is this platform which keeps moving without any trigger point in a loop. And using these platforms, you can make a pretty good game level design. And the best part about these platforms are that they are quite versatile. So if you click on any of the platforms, you can see this end location point which you can move up to anywhere in your level till where you want to move your platform. So I want to move my elevator to this point from where it already is. And if you see on the right side, we have a bunch of parameters which you can use to change the behavior of your platform in editor without coding manually for each of your platform. So here you can change the speed of your platform. You can change their movement style. You can check if you want them to loop around the path and this move on overlap will only make your platform move when you just stand on them. Whereas for this platform, I've set it to loop around the path and we don't need to stand on it in order to make it start moving. And if you want to get this project and all the assets I'm using in this video, then you can download this from my Patreon where you'll get all the project files I've ever made for these tutorial videos. The link is in the description. So before we continue, first let me show you that I'm using these assets like this lift as a platform. Make sure the collisions are set up properly. And the other platform I'm using is this. You can get the similar assets from websites like Sketchfab or you can just get this project from my Patreon. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to create a blueprint class of vector type. Let's name this moving platform base PP since this is going to be a base class for all the moving platform we have. So let's add a static mesh component. Let's name this platform mesh. Now this mesh component is for your platform platform static mesh that you have in your project but since we are using this as a base class let's keep this component empty and then add a box collision and let's name this interactive box since this collision box is going to detect if a character is standing on the platform now let's come to event graph and here let's create a custom event let's name this move platform so this is where we are gonna write all the logics for our moving platforms now let's come back here and we are gonna create child blueprint class of this base blueprint for all the different platforms we have in our project so in the blueprint class Class, go to all classes and search for this moving platform base BP selected and let's name this child class elevator BP. Let's create another child class of this moving platform base BP and let's name this platform BP. Let's open up the elevator BP and since it's the child class of that base blueprint, you can see we already have these components. So select your elevator mesh from here and adjust the collision box according to your mesh so we can detect if the player is standing on the platform. Once you are done with one platform, then you can go to another blueprint class and do the same thing. Now let's come back to the base class and make sure in this collision box, the collision preset is for overlapping. And since these are the child class of the base platform class, so the logic we write here in the base class will also be valid for all of its child classes. So to move platform, let's set timer by event and here let's add a delegate. Let's name this start moving. And let's set the time to 0 0.005 and set this to looping. Now this time I will keep calling this delegate again and again for every 0 0.005 seconds in a loop, which will make the platform movement smooth. So here what you want to do is we want to take our platform mesh and move it somewhere in the world space. On the right side, you can see the location values are changing and this location is called relative location. So here get the platform mesh and search for the set relative location. So the time is going to call this delegate again and again and we'll keep changing our platform relative location slowly by slowly in small steps until we reach to our target location. Now we can use lerp vector here to travel from A location to B location. Now there is a one advanced node for this which is ease which does the same thing to travel from A point to the B point but it comes with this advanced feature. Here you can define the moving style of your moving platform. So we are going to use this instead. So here what is going to be the A point? The A point is going to be the start location of our platform which is the current relative location of our platform. So get the platform mesh and get the relative location. Now this relative location will change as a platform will start moving. So in order to save the start location let's move it to construction construct script and here promote this to variable let's name this start location and now here for the a point we are gonna use this start location now what about the b point the b point is going to be our target location till where we want to move our platform so here let's make a variable name this end location make it a vector and plug this into the b point now what is this alpha so when the alpha value is 0 the result will be the a point and if the alpha value is 1 the result is going to be b point now what if the alpha value is 0.5 then the result will be what is exactly between a and b I really hope you are getting how it works. So the way we are going to move our platform is by gradually changing this alpha value from 0 to 1 so it can reach from A point to the B point. Now let's promote this alpha parameter to a variable and make sure its default value is 0. 
So we will keep adding this alpha value every time this delegate will get called by this timer. So get the alpha, get the add operator and let's add 0 0.005 and then set the alpha to the new added value. And this way the alpha value will keep increasing gradually. Now promote this timer to a variable. Let's name this move platform timer. Now once the alpha value reaches the value of 1, we are going to stop this timer. So here check if it is greater or equals to 1. So if it hasn't reached the value of 1 yet, then we will keep moving this platform. Otherwise, we are going to get the timer and clear it, which will stop calling this delegate and our platform will stop moving. Now before we even start this timer, we are going to check if this timer is valid or not. If it is not, only then we are going to start this timer. Otherwise, that means the timer is still going on and we have to wait till the timer gets over. Now, if we look down here, we know what the starting location is, which we have defined here. But what about the end location? We haven't set it yet, right? Because we are going to get its value from the level itself. For that, check this instance editable, expose on spawn and show 3D widget. So once you've done that, compile it and let's come to our level and let's place our platforms inside this level. Now, after you placed it, you'll see there's a 3D object here with the name of your variable and you can drag it anywhere in your level, wherever you want to set the target location to make your platform move to that location let's come back to the blueprint now we are going to call this event let's say when we'll overlap with this collision box so right click on the box and add an on component begin overlap event and then call this move platform event but before we call this event, we want to check if the overlapped actor is a player, not any other random object in the world. So get player character and check if it is equals to the other actor that has overlapped with this box. So if we hit play and go into the elevator, you can see our moving platform is actually moving to the location that we set for it. But if we go back to the elevator, obviously it won't go reverse and we are also having this weird camera clipping problem. So let's fix this first. Select your platform mesh and scroll down in detail panel and here in the collision preset, set this to custom and set the camera to ignore. So it should fix that camera clipping problem. Now if we place another platform here and set its end location somewhere up here, and now we hit play, you will see that platform will not automatically start moving and will only move when we'll stand on it. So we should create an option to choose between move on overlap or start moving initially. So for that, let's create a variable, name this move on overlap and make it a boolean and make sure to check this instance editable and expose on spawn so we can access this boolean outside from this blueprint. So let's get our event begin play and check if this move on overlap boolean is not true. And if this condition is true, then we are going to call this event. Now when we overlap through the collision box, we are going to check if this move on overlap is true. And if it is true, then we are also going to call this event. So now if you click on this platform, you can see that option here. Let's keep it unchecked while for the elevator, we want it to be true. So check this and now when we hit play, you can see that the second platform has initially moved while the elevator only moves when we overlap through the box. Now we also want our platform to go reverse to the starting point once they reach their target location. Now if you think logically, how you can tell if your platform has reached to the end location. It is when your platform location is equals to this end location. So let's come back to your platform blueprint and here let's create a variable, name this reverse, make sure it's a boolean and set it above here. Now we are going to compare the platform relative location with the end location and to compare it, we are going to use vector length and we're gonna check if both of these vector lengths are exactly equal and if they are, that means our platform is eligible to go reverse. And if we are going reverse, then obviously the starting location and the ending location is going to change. So get the reverse variable and search for select node. This one right here. Let me first convert it to a vector first. Connect the first one to the A, then duplicate and connect the second one to the B. So based on if this condition is true or false, we can provide it different inputs. So let's say if the reverse condition is false. So our A point is going to be the start location and B point is going to be end location. But what if the reverse condition is true? Then our A is going to be end location and B is going to be start location. I hope it makes sense to you. So I'm gonna do one more thing here. I'm going to set the platform relative location just after we clear this timer and what location I'm going to set it is going to be the B point. That is our target point of course and I'm setting it just to make sure that we have reached exactly to our target location. Otherwise this condition can get false just because our platform is almost there but not exactly there. And I forgot one thing that we need to reset this alpha value back to zero just after we clear the timer so that we can reuse it again.
So let's hit play and go into this elevator. So when we reach to the end point, let's go back into the elevator. And here you can see the elevator has gone reverse to the start location. But now we also want an option for our platform to loop around a path. So for that, let's create a variable here. Let's name this loop, set it to instance editable and expose on spawn. Now after you compile, you can see you have this loop option over here. So we're gonna check it for this platform. So looping is very simple. After we clear the timer and after all these, we're gonna check a condition that is if this loop boolean is true. And if it is true, then we are going to call this function again. So here let's call this move platform event. Now there is one more thing over here, which is this function parameter, which affects how your platform moves. So right click and promote this to variable and make this variable instance editable and exposed to spawn so that we can change it to the editor for each platforms. So here you can see we have this function over here, but we're gonna keep the linear movement for this platform. But for the elevator, we're gonna change it to ease in and out. So it starts slow and ends slow. So now if we hit play, as you can see, this platform is looping as we set it to be. Now, if we go into the elevator, you can see how slowly it starts and ends because we change the movement function for this platform. Now, the last thing that is left is speed. Now here, if we multiply this addition value, so this value will be your speed, but it doesn't works quite well because of some scaling issue in this value. So there is a better way of doing it. So here you can search for map range unclamped. So here promote this value to a variable, name this speed, make it instant editable and exposed to spawn, set the default value for the speed to be one. Now this node maps or scales your values in a range. So let's say if your speed value is one, then it gonna return 0 0.002. Make sure you connect the return value to addition here and if your speed value is 2 it gonna return 0 0.004 and it gonna adjust your values according to what your speed value is so here let's select the elevator and here you can change its moment speed so let's set it 0 0.5 and if we hit play and go into the elevator you can see the elevator is moving quite slow because we reduced its speed to 0 0.5 so this time let's set the speed to 2 and this another platform let's set it to 1.5. Hit play, you can see that platform is moving quite faster and if you go into the elevator, you can see we have reached really fast and this platform moving system is working really well. So using these values right here, you can change behavior of every of your platform while designing your level. And since you don't have to code for each particular behavior and you can just change these values from here, it makes the level designing more faster. And I really hope this video helped you out and if you really like my efforts, then you can support me on patreon where you can download and access all the project files i've ever made for these tutorial videos the link is in the description and you can also join my discord server where you can interact with other developers of this community and if this video helped you out you can like and subscribe to my youtube channel and i want to thank the patreon member of this month thank you so much for your support it means a lot all right so till then see you bye bye